All right, so a um, few words about um, Elisa to start. So the ones who don't know who we are. So we are coming from Finland. We are the leading telecom provider in Finland as an, as, uh, as a nature. And no, I'm not the beast from the east, so uh, you can't complain me about the weather in here. Uh, we have much colder in, in back in Finland than you have in here, so it's kind of a mild weather in our standards, so kind of a freshing. Anyway, so uh, so Elisa, uh, we are a we, yeah, Finnish company, so we are the leading telecom provider in Finland and Estonia. Turnover is 1.8 billion euros. We have uh, approximately 5,000 employees. Uh, the thing is why I'm speaking here about the industrial IoT is that we have uh, kind of uh, reshaped the company quite a lot in the past years, and 35% of our revenue comes from IT services. So I'm not going to speak to you about connectivity, anything related to M2M to M to M or narrowband IoT or 5G. I'm really speaking about how to digitalize the factories. And background of that is is our own uh, work. So we have changed how we operate our services. We started our journey seven years ago, eight years ago, from a traditional network operation center model, where the typically all the telcos in the world, they have so-called NOCs, where you are monitoring are your routers or base stations or switches or firewalls on. But that's not enough. So what we change is that we collect all the possible data from every device. So we have something like 5 million active devices in our network, which we monitor real time, all the time. We handle today approximately 100,000 transactions per second. We're analyzing every call, every IPTV usage, every data a consumption what you do as a consumer or corporate customer. And with this journey, we have reached figures like last year that 75% all our incidents were handled as a predictive maintenance before they arise. Even more important is that the absolute incidents in our network, you can see from the slide, has coming down dramatically when the same time the consumption of the data is growing dramatically. Just to give you an idea, we deliver more data uh, in our network, and we are only 5.5 million people, than British Telecom or Vodafone in UK. So in Finland, it's totally typical that you browse uh, HD level uh, movies online as much you want. You have the full coverage everywhere. And I'm sorry to say that I couldn't uh, show you real time demos in here because we had a problem with the uh, communication services, but uh, uh, you can come to our booth in K25 to see later on in real time the uh, stuff what I'm showing here. So this was the basis on 2013-14 to us because we have, we're serving uh, over 50% of the Finnish corporate customers as their network services, hosting their uh, servers, managing their uh, workstations and so forth. So with the discussions with the corporates and manufacturing companies in Finland, you know, ABB drives in Finland, Danfoss drives, Wärtsilä, Valmet and so forth, uh, they're looking exactly the same what we are doing they would like to have 75% predicted uh, maintenance for all their processes, on all their production lines. So from there, we started to build our smart factory management concept. And by the way, we're still working in our uh, internal projects. So when you start, don't expect that you will have all the results in one year. It will take, it, it is a journey. It is really a digital transformation journey when you start to change how do you operate your factories, how do you operate your, your lines. 
All right. A uh, few facts also, or interesting facts. So Gartner made last year a study in Finland. A uh, few interesting things. 50% uh, of Finnish enterprise customers are already using IoT or smart systems. Where the rest of the world is only 25% is using. More important and more interesting uh, information from this study is that uh, only 17% of Finnish enterprise customers are saying that there's no, one I, I, there's no need for industrial IoT or IoT. Where the rest of the world is 40% is saying there's no need. So you could say that Finland at the moment at least is a forerunner of implementing IoT and industrial IoT solutions. And of course, the reason why we are here and which we've been doing the past little over a year has been expanding our reach, so providing solution out from the Scandinavia is because in Finnish market, we are the absolute number one of delivering smart solutions uh, to Finnish uh, enterprise customers. So we've been willing to uh, help you as well to get uh, in the same journey. Uh, it was a very good presentation just uh, earlier. What I want to say is that we don't go in a deep of uh, putting more sensors in the devices. We use them partners to do that if you don't have that. But basic idea is that every factory, more or less, well, if it's a very, very old factory, but any decent uh, modern factory, they have based, uh, built based on ISA 95 standard. Where you have the, the PLCs, you have the, uh, the SCADA system, the automation systems, you have Siemens automation, you have whatever automation system you have, you, you may have or you don't have a mess uh, system, so manufacturing execution system, but you definitely have business applications like SAP ERP or other ERP, supply chain management solutions, uh, product lifecycle man management solution, you have SharePoint. So the point is don't change those. There's no need to change your existing systems to digitalize your processes. We can connect to all those systems. And that's the whole idea. Using new technologies to connect all the relevant data where you have, even from SharePoint or from the automation system. And you, you move that in a single data lake. And when you have the data, you can start to manipulate that data. So you can start to create rules. So first you connect, you create the virtual data lake, then you have the real-time visibility to your data. So you have the visibility, what is happening in my factory? Real-time, not like a, a report once a month or weekly report. You have real-time view all the time using any device anywhere in the world uh, access to, you, to your data. Then when you have the data, you can start to also taking use the machine learning. You can extend that for, uh, with the augmented reality and so forth. So you create new solutions, end-to-end uh, -end cockpit where you monitor real time to your whole end-to-end -end inbound logistics, all your production processes, outbound logistics. You can do the prediction models. Uh, what is a very specific for us is that uh, because we are in the gaming industry as well, so we imported a gaming uh, software to present the data. So you actually, if you have, hand, raise your hand if you have heard about Digital Twin. Good. So what we do, we do from the, the whole factory as a Digital Twin. All the equipment what you have in the factory you have a, as a digital twin. And, and of course, you do this to increase your quality, production quality, the end product quality, avoid the unplanned downtimes in, in, the, uh, in the factory. We have one customer, uh, they have 12 factories. They spend 
every month 13,000 man hour solving unplanned stops. 13,000 man hours just solving the unplanned stops. So if you can re reduce 50% of that, so the saving us on the man hours, but also every unplanned stop causes losses to you in the production. All right, so the aim of course of this all what we do is that you would have a tools to give you a real time optimization to the plant. Continuous optimization. And in the, in the end, you know, where the prediction is that we will have autonomous plants. Everyone is speaking autonomous driving, but uh, we should start to speak uh, what is the future factory? It's an autonomous factory. Your software is handling that part. And one slide from Industry 4.0 Maturity Index report from Aachen University. So we are part of uh, E4TC, you can go and Google it. So it's a European 4.0 Transformation Center. So German industry has been putting 2 billion euros to create the digital transformation guidelines. How do you transform your existing factory to a digital factory? And just showing here that, you know, we intend to speak about the predictive maintenance, but it's not the first thing to do. The first part of the digitalization is to handle the connectivity. I need to get the data. And then when I have the data, I can start to do the next step to understand what is happening. Next step is, why is it happening? And then the third step is, you can start to predict what will happen. And then finally, we are to going towards an autonomous uh, factor. So, a few examples. So this is a picture of uh, e E4TC demonstration factory Aachen. Uh, this factory is an assembly factory, which is uh, building uh, car chassis. So university, it's an interesting. University's turnover is 900 million euro. They're doing business. So one of the businesses are electric cars. So it's Ego Mobile, so you can go and check that out as well. So four seated uh, electric cars, like the second or third car uh, to your home. So they're building cassis in this factory, but also building uh, electric supported street uh, scooters. So this is how it looks in the uh, picture, and this is how it looks when we have digitalized the factory. And you can, you can just go like in a game. You can drill in, drill out, turn around it. You have all the data in your fingertip. Just push on the green label or red label if there's an alarm. It will bring you the data, the OEE, all KPIs for you want to have from that uh, certain machine, robot, welding automate, or whatever the device, device is. And in this case, all these systems where you can see here are connected. So all that data flows in a single data lake. And then you can drill, as I said, this is a welding robot. So you have always the information, real time, what is happening. Other an example from E4TC is a battery factory. So the university is, uh, uh, it's a more research program, uh, researching new type of a car batteries. And this is a process industry par, uh, uh, production line. And this is a full retrofitting, as the DFA as well. But the idea is that in here, this is a consortium with the PTC, uh, Hewlett-Packard, OCI, Soft, uh, National Instrument, and, and ELISA. So it has been fully retrofitted to get the old necessary data. And the 
the, the only purpose for this factory, for this uh, work, is to increase the quality and understand what is the right mixing uh, for the coating mixing, where they are shooting the electrics, uh, electrons to, uh, to um, foils. Other example, uh, where one of our biggest customers, Danfoss Power Electrics. This is uh, a Denmark, in Denmark, uh, SMP, so electric board, PCB board manufacturing company. So we modeled the whole seven, six lines. So you have the real-time data, all the alerts, information, real-time from all the, all the lines. You can drill in to uh, any line. You get the immediately the OEE on the line. You can drill in to, for example, to Owen. In, in this uh, production, uh, they use NO2 in the uh, shouldering ovens. And for example, if the NO2 level goes uh, too high, the quality of the shouldering is not good enough. Even so that it goes uh, through the Omron in inspection uh, units. But it's not going to be. So the product end product will come too early back for maintenance. So now we can stop immediately if the NO2 level goes too high, the process, uh, and so forth. Another example, you may want to don't want to use a 3D modeling. We can use the 2D uh, modeling <coughs> as well. This is an example of Sandvik assembly plant on the mining tools, which is one of our customers uh, as well. Or then uh, simply a uh, uh, dashboards, very interactive, dynamic dashboards. Uh, Procter Gamble is currently our largest uh, customer. This solution will be implemented to 100 factories around the world. And it's a really end-to-end -end cockpit where you have the department uh, dashboards, uh, line dashboards, inbound and outbound logistic dashboards. And this is the main dashboard where you drill in. And this scales automatically from your mobile phone to tablet. It's purely web browsing. So there's no specific interfaces. And then you can drill in to very deep, so we're actually handling over 100 uh, KPIs in real time. So, coming to the end, and, and one big and most important message from me to you is that these projects doesn't take a year. So we have implemented so many projects now so that we have created our own very lean process, which is what we call three plus three plus three weeks. So we deliver to you basically any type of a production line, proof of value in the real-time data in, in nine weeks. With the process where we have the first step is connect and understand the data. So what data you have, what are the most critical KPIs, which you should you know, understand and have the data from those. Next step is visualize that data. And then the last and uh, most important is act on the data. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you, Kerry, for, for sharing your experiences with us. Um, do you have any questions from the audience? Please raise your hand. Yes, one in the middle here, please. Um, Julian from Newcastle University. Um, thank you, first of all, for the presentation. Very interesting. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you also do that, especially for small and medium-sized enterprises taking a company, 100 people, 30 machines, old machines, um, but also, um, let's say, industry 3.0 uh, machines and uh, connected devices. Um, so first of all, are you, are you um, able to do that for small enterprises as well? And then what would be a 
what would be the investment that that company has to 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 give in Elisa to um, yeah to 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 make it happen? Yeah. So um, mm, to be a straight, we're not focusing on on, on a small companies. Even the medium-sized companies may. Uh, be a little bit too too small, but it depends on uh, how many machines you said 30 machines or something like that. It may may make sense, but we're more focusing in really a customers which have more than one plant, because then our solution also brings the creator value because we can start to benchmark why you have you know in in factory in a Manchester. Line two is 30% more effective than the line in Liverpool, the same you know, production and, and same line. And so we can start to manipulate the data again and make benchmarking and optimizing on the fly you know, different plans. So, um, and the price is, it totally depends on the, uh, the uh, size of the, um, how complex the uh, production environment is. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we have another question over there on the other side, please. Henny Farad, Parks and Um it, the, the part of connecting the whole factory, there is uh, currently the ecosystem connecting as well to the information coming from the consumer, especially in the field of quality, where we want to trace the data from a product complaint back to all the manufacturing data. So how the part of um, consumer, the ecosystem, even data coming <coughs> from social media is bring and connected to, um, to your, uh, your system and proposal? Yeah, we could do that, but currently we're not doing that. So uh, we're, we are really very, uh, so we've been the uh, past four, four and a half years here, uh, been delivering all type of solutions, but uh, what we now is focusing is really what happens inside the factory. So the outbound logistics stops in the gate of the plant. So we only follow where you know the the trucks are or whatever are are kind of uh, filled and, and and when they go out from the gate, we don't any more have any control. The same is the inbound logistics. We know what we have ordered. We, we can have the real-time information when we have a, a production order, a certain product, uh, so we know that oh, do we have all the needed raw materials uh, to run the uh, daily production processes and, and, and you know, production orders. We know that, but we don't you know, follow what is delivered to the field or, or something like that. So that's okay. not in our focus. So we're really inside the factories. Thank you for that question, and uh, thank you very much, Carrie, for, for sharing uh, your experiences. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.